अरुणदायक कीर्तन वाईफाई इज नॉट देयर अब यू गॉट सॉन्ग बुक यस आई हैव सम इंडोर लैंग्वेज इंडोर ओके फॉर देम सॉन्ग बुक यू गॉट सॉन्ग बुक या अरुणदायक कीर्तन Udilo Aruna Pura Babagi Arun Dai Kirtan Sachi Arun Dai Kirtan Okay ओ दिलो आरुणा पूरा बाकी द्विजमानी गोराम निजागे बक्का था सम्मोहा लोए लसाते जिलना कर ब्रजे ताताई ताताई बजल को गना गना ताहे जंजेर रो प्रेमे जला जला सोना रंगा चरणी नो पूरा बाजे मुखुंड माधव यादव हरी बोले न बोलो रे बंधन न बोरी मिची निदावसे जलोरे राती दिवस शरीर साहजे ऐ मान दूर लबा मान वधे हो पाया की खोरो भावना के हो ऐ बिना बाजी ले अशोधा सूता Charani pori bilahaje Udita tapana hoile asta Jina jello boile hoi baby asta Tabe ke no e be ala sa hoi Na ba jari dhaya raha jhe Jeevana anitya janna hasa Tahi na na vidha vipadha bhaar Jeevana nitya jana hata 
Tahinana vida vipada bha. Nama Shraya Kuriyatani Tumi Taka Apanakaje Jeevana Jeevana Jibara Kalyana Sadhana Kam Jagati Asi Madhura Nam Avidyati Miratapana Rupe Rigogane Virahaje Krishna Nam Shuddha Kori Apan Yudho Bhakati Vinoda Pran Nama bina kichu nahi koara Choda bova nama je Chief jago, chief jago Gora Chanda Bohole Kota Nidra Jaya Maya Pisa Chira Kohole Bhaji Bhabaliya Ese Samsara Bikahare Bhule Ya Rohile Tumi Avidyara Bhare Tomare lohe te ami Haino avatahara Ami bina banduara ke ache tomara Eneche oshadi maiha Nashi bara lagi Hare Nama Maha Mantra Lo to me Magi Prabhu Chara Ane 
ਦੇਹ ਆ hare nama mantra loy lo magi ya nitai gor hari bo hari bo hari bo nitai gor hari bo hari bo nitai gor hari bo gor premanande hari bo om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Narayanam namaskrityam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudiraya Asta Praesh Shuva Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati uttama shloke Bhakti bhavati naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam canto 10 chapter 89 text number 58 This chapter is entitled Krishna and Arjuna retrieve the son the sons of a brahmana Dvijad maja me yuvayo didrikshana mayo panita bhuvi dharma guptaye kalavatirna vavane barasuran Adveha Buyas Parayitam Antime Dvijatma Jame Yuvayor Didrikshana Mayo Panita Bhuvidharma Guptaye kalavati navavanar varasuran advehabuyas tvarayetam antime dvijatma jame yuvayor didrikshana mayo panita bhuvidar magoptaye kalavati navavanel barasuran hadveha buyas tvarayetam antime Vijatma jame yuvayor didrikshana Mayo panita bhuvidharma guptaye 
kalavatir na vavaner barasuran Adve habuyas tvarai tamanti me Yavayo, you, you, you too, the direction who wanted to see Maya by me. Upanita brought Bhuvi on the earth, Dharma of the principles of religion, Guptae for the protection, Kala as my expansions, Avatirnao descended, Avane of the earth. Bara, who are burdens, Asuran, the demons, Hatva, after killing, Iha, here, Buya, again, Twaraya, quickly, Itam, come, Anti, to the proximity. Me, Me, my. Translation. Lord Mahavishnu said, I brought the Brahmana's sons here because I wanted to see the two of you, my expansions, who have descended to the earth to save the principles of religion. As soon as you finish killing the demons who burden the earth, quickly come back here to me. Purport. As explained by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, the secret import of this vocation is as follows. You two who have descended along with your kalas, your personal energies, should kindly return to me after killing the demons who burden the earth. Que please quickly send these demons here to me for the sake of their liberation. It is stated in Harivamsa 
and in the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam that the path of gradual liberation passes through the intermediate station of Lord Mahavishnu's abode outside the eighth shell of the universe. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasad Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're hearing how Lord Krishna had gone with Arjuna through the coverings of the universe. Their purpose was to find the sons of the Brahmana. The Brahmana from Dwarka had lost his sons. At birth, they had been taken away mysteriously. And Arjuna had vowed that he would protect the Brahmana's sons. Otherwise, he was ready to give up his own life. So when Arjuna failed to protect the next child of the Brahmana's wife, then Arjuna was, he was ready to give up his life. But Lord Krishna brought him out of the universe to the abode of Maha Vishnu in the Kajyo Ocean. And it is described here in the purport, Prabhupada describes how they'd gone through the eight coverings of the universe into the Kajyo Ocean where Mahavishnu is residing. And this, this is also described in Prabhupada's second canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, in the second chapter. In the second chapter there, Sukadeva Goswami is describing different processes by which one can enter into the spiritual world. And one process is by bhakti yoga. And the other process is also by bhakti yoga, but it's by using mystic yoga means to go through the coverings of the universe. It describes how you have to give up your body, give up the gross body, and then the subtle body, go through the different coverings until you come to these different layers of the universe. In the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, Sanatana Goswami also describes about Gop Kumar. Gop Kumar is a cowherd boy from Govardhan and he was given a mantra by his guru and by the power of his guru's mantra he was able to travel many places and he went to all the different places in the universe. He went first to Swargaloka and when he got to Swarg then he heard there's another place higher than Swargaloka. He heard there were planets above Swargaloka. And he went to Mahaloka and Janaloka. And then he heard there were places above there. He went to Tapaloka. And then there's a place still higher, Satyaloka or Brahmaloka. Gokumar, by the power of the mantra, he was able to go to these different places. But when he got all the way up to Brahmaloka, he heard there's something even beyond Brahmaloka, outside of the universe. And you have to go through the coverings of the universe. So Sanatana Goswami, he is describing to us 
how the yogi goes through these different coverings. Sanatana Goswami reveals to us, he describes what is it like in these different regions, these planets above Swargaloka, above the heavenly planets. He tells us what's, what, they, what, what are they doing there? What are the different activities? What are the people like? And he tells us also how the yogi can go through the coverings of the universe. The first covering is the most gross covering. The, the grossest of the elements is earth. And to go through the earth covering, he, he first of all went into the earth covering. And it means in order to enter that earth covering, he has to take an earthly body. He takes an earthly body in a subtle form. He takes an earthly form and he enters into this covering, the shell which is around the universe, which is of many different layers. And the first layer is earth. So he had, he was, he assumed an earthly body and he entered into it and in that earthly region, he saw the personification of the earth element there, the goddess in charge. And she welcomed him. Oh, welcome. You're well. Please come and stay in my abode. Please come and stay here, she said to him. And he saw how she was worshipping Lord Varaha. Lord Varaha. He belongs in that earth, earthly region, right? Lord Varaha, he could go and pick up the earth planet from the bottom of the universe in his boar form. So Lord Varaha is worshipped there in that earth, earthly region. And she was inviting Gop Kumar, come and stay here with me. But Gop Kumar had been doing a lot of sadhana. And his sadhana was very powerful. His sadhana would not allow him to stay there because he wants to go higher. His purpose is to go through the coverings of the universe. So even though that earthly region was attractive, he, didn't, he, decided, he won't stay there. He went through that covering. He didn't stay. And the next region, what do you think the next region is after earth? Will be water, right? The watery region. And who is the deity there in that watery region? Will be Matsya. Right? The Matsya form of the Lord is there. He's worshipped by the, the goddess who is in charge of the watery region. And each of these different layers, as you go through the different regions, after water, the next region is? Huh? Fire. fire, right. And the deity in the, who's worshipped in that fiery region? Surya Narayan. Hmm? Right? So different regions. You go up there, there's a, there's a deity there in each of the coverings. There's eight coverings of the universe and each of the region. And as you go through each of the regions, it's more and more opulent. More and more, there's more and more pleasure, more and more enjoyment there in these different regions. Much, much more than any enjoyment you can experience here on this planet. This place, there's no real enjoyment here on this earthly region. You go higher in the universe, there's more enjoyment. Heavenly planets, there's more enjoyment. Above heavenly planets, Janaloka, Mahaloka, Tapaloka, Satyaloka, each one more and more enjoyment. And when you go through the coverings, the different coverings of the universe, more and more enjoyment, more and more opulence 
it's bewil it can bewilder the conditioned soul. So only the pure souls will be able to go through these coverings. If you're not pure, you'll become attracted. Each place, Gob Kumar came into the different coverings. Each place, the goddess was there and she's saying, Oh, welcome. Come and stay in my abode. Come and stay in my place. He got through the different coverings. He came to the final covering. The final covering was Prakriti. Prakriti, the material nature. In the Pradhan form. So, the goddess there is Maya, and she was worshipping Mohini Murti. Gop Kumar came into that region, and he saw the personification, the deity of Prakriti, was worshipping Mohini Murti. Means, Mohini Murti is more attractive than Maya. Right? If Maya is worshipping Mohini Murti, it means Mohini Murti is more attractive than Maya herself. So he saw Prakriti there and she, she welcomes him to her abode and she's also saying, come and stay here in my kingdom. She said, I am the giver of liberation. You want to get liberation? I can give you liberation. If that's what you want, you just want to get liberation, I can give you that. We don't get liberation ourselves. It's not that we can give up the material nature. Maya has to let us free from the bonds of material nature. Sanatana Goswami makes this point in his commentary that the material nature has to free us from the bondage of Maya. It's not that we can ourselves break free. Maya has to release us. So when she sees that we have surrendered to her Lord, to the Supreme Lord, then she will release us. Maya also said, and if you want devotion, I can also give you that. I am the bestower of devotion. You want to worship the Supreme Lord? I am the servant of the Lord. I am his sister. Right? When Mother Yashoda gave birth, she gave birth to two children. There was Lord Krishna and there was also Maya, the girl. Right? Vasudev came from the prison house in Mathura and Vasudev came and brought baby Krishna. He changed. He took away the girl and he left Krishna there in the home of Nanda Maharaj and took away the girl, Maya. So Maya is Krishna's sister. So she can also give devotion. She is the servant of Krishna. Shristi stiti pralaya satana saktareka chayeva yashya bhuvanani vibhati darga echan rupa mapi yashya chachaistatesa govinda madipursam the creating, maintaining, and annihilating deity of the mundane world is worshipped by all people as Durga. 
I adore the primeval Lord Govinda, under whose direction Durga conducts herself. And Lord Brahma also describes it how Durga moves like a shadow under the control of the Lord. She's not independent. She moves like a shadow under the direction of the Lord. So in this way, Gop, Gop Kumar was experiencing coming through the you know getting through the different layers of covering the universe to come into the beyond the universe is the brahma jyoti bright brilliant light the effulgence the brahma jyoti so gop kumar in brihad bhagavatamrita describing like that how you can go through the different coverings of the universe. You want to get freed from the material energy? People would do like that. Prabhupada writes in the purport in that section, he says, 5,000 years ago, people were more trained in the Vedic culture and they could practice yoga. They'd all learned this kind of mystic yoga they could detach, they could go through, they could do these things, they could elevate, they could give up the attachment to the body. We read about how Sati, she could burn her body to ashes. She brought the fire out from her body, burned her body to ashes. Dadichi, Dadichi was approached by Indra. Please give me the bones from your body. And so Indra, he could do it. And rather, Dadichi, he could do it. He gave up his body in order to give his bones to Indra so that Lord Indra could make his Bajra weapon by which he could kill Vritasura. So, this this kind of uh, yoga was common in other ages but in Kali Yuga we are all influenced by Kali Yuga we cannot do these kind of yoga things going through the coverings of the universe how can we ever get liberated then well the only way in which we can get liberated in this Kali Yuga, simply by the holy name. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Harinama Harinam Harinameva Kevalam Kalo Nasteva 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 There's no other way in the Kali Yuga. Not by karma, not by jnana, not by yoga, only by the holy name and we have to chant the holy name with devotion with bhakti kaler dosha nide rajan asti ehel ko mahadguna kirtana deva krishna shya mukta sangha parambrajit srimad bhagavatam almost at the conclusion of srimad bhagavatam this describes it the Kali Yuga is an ocean of faults. Kaler dosha nide raja. Dosha. Do you have any doshas? Do you have any doshas in your chart? <laughs> Maybe just a few, huh? Doshas. So because we have these doshas, even Arjuna said like that, right? What did Arjuna say? No, he, said, he, said, he says in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is saying, because of my miserly impurities, I do not know what is actually the religious principles. Right? What's the verse? How does it begin again? Karpanya dosha pahata swabhava. Karpanya dosha. The dosha is there because of my karpanya kripana miserly weakness. 
to be miserly is weakness, right? It's a fault. And if we are weak in our spiritual practice, then that is also miserliness. We're not using the human life properly. We're meant to cultivate the Brahminical nature, but instead we have the Kripana nature, <laughs> the miserly nature. We want to be Brahminical, we want to cultivate the Brahminical nature, the, the spiritual nature. And if we, ha if we have that attachment to the material, that is a dosha. So Lord Krishna is saying, Arjuna is saying, he, Arjuna recognized his miserly weakness. And because of his miserly weakness, he was confused about the religious principles. Therefore, he was surrendering to Krishna and he was asking Lord Krishna to guide him, to instruct him, to tell him what he needs to do. So, here also in Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Krishna has gone into the abode of liberation the kingdom of Mahavishnu, he's entered into that abode. But to get there, he had to go through all the coverings of the universe. And you want to get there, you want to, want to come to the abode of liberation, how can we get liberated? In the Kali Yuga, we cannot just do that mystic yoga. We don't have a chariot like Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna had his own chariot. It was, of course, they say it was given to him by Agni, the fire god, but it was an indestructible chariot. And when it comes time for Lord Krishna to go back to Godhead, after the annihilation of the Yadu dynasty, after they'd all annihilated each other, then Lord Krishna called for Daruka. And he wants Daruka go back to Dwarka and tell everyone in Dwarka they have to leave Dwarka immediately because Dwarka is going to be inundated by the ocean. And at that time, Lord Krishna's chariot went up into the sky and went back to the spiritual world. Daruka was a chariot driver. <laughs> he had to stay, he had to go to Dwarka. But he also entered into the eternal abode of the Lord. Daruka is also an eternal associate of Lord Krishna. And his chariot is also an eternal paraphernalia. And the four horses which pull his chariot, they're also eternal associates, the Lord's uh, horses for his chariot. So they come to this world they perform some service. When the service was over, they go back to the spiritual sky. We want to enter into the spiritual sky. We cannot do mystic yoga, but we can do bhakti yoga. We have to cultivate our devotion. And we cultivate the devotion in the Kali Yuga by chanting the holy name by doing service for Lord Krishna. Of course, we have no taste. We have no taste to chant the holy name. We have no taste to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Why? Because of our covering, our conditioning, our contamination on the heart. We can overcome that contamination by Service, by doing service. Shru Shru Shro Shradadanashya Vasudev Kitaruchi Shan Mahat Sevaya Vipra Punya Tirta Nishevana. By serving the devotees who are free of sin, great service is done. By such service, one gains affinity for hearing the message of Vasudev. 
So Sir Prabhupada, when, you, when we distribute Prabhupada's books, when we do some preaching for Prabhupada's movement, that is service for Krishna's dear devotee. And by doing, by doing service for Krishna's pure devotee, we can develop a taste for hearing and chanting. Cultivating a taste for the holy name. Rupa Goswami compares it to dealing with jaundice. I got jaundice when I first came to India. I came to Delhi in the summertime. I was serving in New York and the devotees all went for the first Gaur Purnima festival and they told me, you have to stay and do the puja after we come back, then you can go because you're going to go and stay in India. Gopal Krishna Maharaj, he was serving in New York and Prabhupada was telling him, come to India, I need your help in India because you're from India, you can speak Hindi, you're an Indian, we need you in India to establish Krishna consciousness movement in India. So Gopal Krishna was coming to India from New York and he said to the temple president, I want some men f to bring to India because at that time there were no young Indian men, devotees. We were all foreigners. The whole, every temple in India, th there was only three, three temples in India. <laughs> there was Calcutta and uh, Bombay and Delhi. There was nothing in South India. Later we got land in Hyderabad. Later we got opened up Madras. Everything came late. But initially there was there were very less temples. Delhi, when I came to Delhi, we had one tiny little rented house in Bengali market. And we were worshipping Radha Partha Sarati. We were about five devotees. There was maybe one Indian. <laughs> Like that, there were very less Indian boys joining the temple in those days, in Prabhupada's time. So, uh, Prabhupada wanted Gopal Krishna Maharaj to come to India. So, Gopal Krishna, but Prabhupada wanted the devotees to come from Europe. We would come, f come from Europe, come from America to help, to do the preaching, to make life members, and to do the puja and everything like that. So, uh, Gopal Krishna, he, he was a, a householder at the time. He asked the temple president, give me some men to bring to India. And he said he wanted me to come. He said, because, you should come because he said it's difficult for American to get visa. In those days, very difficult for an American to get visa for India. But I was British. I didn't even need a visa <laughs> in those days. Now it's different. Now it's di and so Gopal Krishna Maharaj said, you come with me to India. So I came with them to India. And it was after the Gaur Purnima festival. So it was already April, May, very hot in Delhi, you know. And so Delhi can get like 45, 50 degrees get so hot the tar melts you know <laughs> so i got jaundice and i didn't know how to, what to do so then the devotee told me said drink sugar cane juice i said oh yeah that's good i thought that's nice i like sugar cane juice but when i got the sugar cane juice i was drinking it oh it tastes so bitter Blah. There's something wrong. Maybe the sugar cane juice is no good. Why is it so bad? He said, no, no, because you have jaundice. The liver is not good. You cannot taste the sweetness because your jaundice is defective. He said, you have to keep drinking. Gradually, as you get healthy, you'll taste the sweetness. So Rupa Goswami gives that example in relation to the chanting of the holy name. 
and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, doing, doing this. In the beginning we don't have taste. We don't chant the holy name with proper attention. And we come to Srimad Bhagavatam and we go to sleep. All right, as soon as we say Om Namo. Oh. <laughs> we should make a movie. Make a movie of the devotees. <laughs> yeah. Hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> I don't know. This idea of you guys having prasadam before class, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a... Anyway, the point is we have to develop that taste for hearing, the taste for chanting, then we can properly serve Krishna in our contaminated state, in our disease condition. We all have jaundice, jaundice of materialism. We're attached to materialistic life. How to get the taste for spiritual life? You have to do it, you have to be determined. I'm going to be a devotee. I want to get free of this attachment, the greed, the, the, this, the, the, this desire to enjoy the material world. This is no good. I need to develop a taste for service to Krishna. <laughs> it comes about <laughs> by doing seva. We have to do intense service to Krishna. We have to hear constantly. We have to chant incessantly. Only then we can develop to get a little taste for this devotional service. You cannot do mystic yoga. There's no way we'll go through the coverings by like what's being described here in Srimad Bhagavatam. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knows the nature of people in the Kali Yuga. Therefore, he has come to give the Sankirtan movement, to make it very easy for people to go back to Godhead, just simply by chanting the holy name, just by calling out to Krishna. So this service to Krishna, very important. We should be greedy for service. We pray to Krishna, our chanting, the Maha Mantra is a prayer. We're praying to Krishna, Oh Supreme Lord Krishna, please engage me in your service. We want to do service and that service is there. Chanting the holy name is service. Come to temple, see the deities, that is service. Worship Prabhupada, offer a flower to Prabhupada every day, that is service to Krishna. Krishna says, the most confidential knowledge, right? What do we need to do? Manmana Bhavamad Bhakto. Madhyaji mam, mam me vaishyasi yukvaivam, atmanam mat. Krishna is saying, do engage your mind in thinking of me. How will you think of Krishna if you don't hear regularly about Krishna? How will you think of Krishna if you don't see the deity every day? We had one devotee, when I was in New York, there was this one brahmachari, he would always come and say, do you remember what color of ring did Krishna have on his finger today? Whoa. He would test everybody, he would ask, do you remember what was the necklace Jagannath had round his neck? 
What color was Krishna's garland? He would do things like, he would, he would be reminding us how we, we have to remember. We come and see the deity, we are, oh, okay. We don't look closely. We don't remember even what dress the deity was wearing. We forget so easily. But Krishna said, Manmana bhava madbhakto, engage your mind in thinking of me, become my devotee, worship me, and offer obeisances to me. Namaskaru. Just simply by bowing down to Krishna, we are doing service. We are developing the service attitude. People would say, oh, why I have to bow down? Prabhupada said, better to bow down to Krishna than to be forced to bow down. You will have to bow down to old age. You will bow down to disease. And you will bow down to death. Do you like that? Do you like old age, disease and death? You are forced to bow down to these things. But if we bow down to Krishna voluntarily, Krishna will free us from birth and death. No more birth and death. So better to bow down lovingly, willingly, than to be forced to bow down. The material nature is a cruel master. She's not there to give us an easy time. She's there to punish us. She's got her trident and she's going to let, let us have it. All the miseries of material life will be inflicted by her trident. Material world, Lord Krishna describes, Dukkha-alayam ashasvatam. All, it's all temporary place of misery. But we're trying to make it comfortable. We're trying to enjoy here. We have to understand our real home is not here. If you could go and travel, just like people go and travel nowadays, people go and travel, they go to foreign countries and they see other countries. You can go other planets, you can go higher planets, and you can go beyond the universe into the spiritual sky. Do you want to go there? Do you want to go and see Krishna's abode? The Lord's abode is there in the spiritual sky with all of his eternal associates. And we are in the prison house. We are loitering in this prison house of the material world. And this material body is our prison uniform. But we are still trying to make it very nice, you know. People go to the gym, build the body, make the muscles go to the beauty parlor, go to the spa. I'm, I'm seeing everywhere in Calcutta, I never saw before, the spa, that spa. <laughs> People, all, they're trying to be comfortable here in this place. They're not thinking that they're going to have to get, they're going to have to leave this place. They're going to have to die. Where are they going to go? So intelligent people will be thinking, where, am, where to go from here? And we'll make some arrangement. You make some arrangement to go some other place. So that is why we come to Krishna consciousness. That is why we do bhakti yoga. We're preparing for the future, for the best next life, to be with Krishna in his abode, which is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. 
And Krishna said, one who goes there, never come back. Never come back again. You never want to come back again when you go there. So that is Krishna. That is why Lord Krishna comes to this world to teach us. That's why he performed these pastimes with Arjuna. Why he's taking Arjuna to the abode of liberation to bring back the Brahmana's sons and to bring them to Dwarka. Because in Dwarka, they can all be engaged in devotional service. Bhakti is higher than liberation. We are not interested in liberation. Liberation can have any time. Bilva Mangal Thakur said, we see, he sees devotion standing with arms folded, waiting to serve him. So that is devotion. Devotion, liberation can be had any, not, nothing for a devotee. A devotee wants service. And by service, you'll get prem. One day it will lead to prema bhakti, love of God. And Mahaprabhu wants all of us to get prem. Okay, any question? Who wants prem? Yeah, you want prem? Yes, uh, well we have to understand that all of the Lord's incarnations, they come from Vishnu. So when Krishna and Arjuna appeared, they're also coming through Vishnu, but they're not staying there. Vishnu also comes from Swayam Bhagavan Krishna. So Swayam Bhagavan Krishna is the source of all of the avatars and all of his expansions. The Purusha avatars, like Mahavishnu, he is an expansion from Swayam Bhagavan Krishna. And all of these different forms of the Lord, like Lord Varaha, Matsya, Mohini Murti, I was mentioning all the, they're all coming originally from Mahavishnu, from Vishnu, and Vishnu, he's coming from Krishna. So Mahavishnu is speaking like that. He's saying to the Lord, just come back. He's saying, uh, he's talking, you have your mission. Bhagavad Gita says, Paritranaya sadhunam vinas chaya chaduskritam. The Lord comes to give pleasure to the devotees and kill the demons. So Mahavishnu was saying, bring the demons to me, let them get liberated. When you bring them to me, they'll be liberated. Lord Krishna would kill the demons, they would get impersonal liberation. Now Lord Krishna, Mahavishnu is saying, come back to me. Yeah, he's saying, come back to me, but it doesn't mean he's, Lord Krishna is going to stay there with Mahavishnu. Lord Krishna has his own abode. But when he finishes his pastimes, he can come through there. And Prabhupada describes it like that, that coming through Mahavishnu, the abode of Mahavishnu, it, it's, they're passing through it. They're not stopping there. They're just passing through the abode of Mahavishnu on the way into the spiritual world, into Vaikunthas and Goloka. So it's like that. It, it, it's on the way, you know, like you go to Delhi, you go through so many cities on the way to Delhi. You, you don't, you, you know, you're going to Delhi, but you, you pass through other cities. So in the same way, the yogis, the devotees, going back to Godhead, they will pass, pass through the abode of Mahavishnu. They won't stop there.
Hare Krishna Mahesh, thank you for your wonderful class. But you are telling one point like about to develop more uh, prema, we need to engage in more and more service. So many times we see to do physical service, many times we don't like. If somebody asks us to do service, many times the mind is there, are why should I do or why I have to engage, Some, someone else can do. So how we can come out of this tendency and accept more service? We have to understand the value of service, that it's something very special to be able to d do service for Lord Krishna. Right? We use body, mind and words should all be used in the service of Lord Krishna. So if somebody is asking us to do some service, we should think, thank you very much. You're very kind to give me some service. Service is something, a very valuable thing to be able to do service for Lord Krishna. Later on, you may not get that opportunity. It's, some, it's, it's such a rare thing to have that opportunity to do service for Lord Krishna. Someone else, you know, they're serving birlas. You're working in the birla company, you're serving birla. Or you're working for Tata, you're serving Tata. You're serving Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The one who all the birlas and the Tatas and everybody else, they're all worshipping. We should be so fortunate, think of ourselves so fortunate that we are able to do service for the Supreme Lord, that one who is above everyone. Even the Brahmas, so different multitudes of Brahmas from all the universes, they all bow before Lord Krishna. And that same Lord Krishna is residing here and we are having the opportunity to do service for him. This is his home. This temple is the home of the Lord and we're using it for his service. So we are fortunate to have that opportunity to do service for him. So we have to co control our mind. The demon in the mind will say, Oh, why I should do that? Oh, why I should do this? No, no we, we should be thinking, I'm very fortunate to be able to have the opportunity to do service for Krishna. When the body gets old and infirm, you may not be able to do it. It becomes more and more difficult. But while you're still young and healthy, you should want to do as much service as you can. So it's, it's the, the, the demoniac nature which is within us. That we want to rebel. I don't know uh, why I should do this. You know, this is the mind, you see. So we have to control the mind by spiritual knowledge. Understand, who am I serving? I'm serving the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna is not avatar. He is avatari. He's the origin of all the avatars. They all come from him. We're not just worshipping an avatar, but he is the origin of all the avatars. And so we're so fortunate to have this opportunity. One man used to come, when I was here, there was this one man used to come, he would say, he would say to me, I can cry for my business. I can cry for my family. I can cry for my children, my wife. I cannot cry for Krishna. I said, I'm so unfortunate. He, he understood his condition. He was lamenting like that. So we are like that. We will do service on the mundane platform, the material level. We'll do so many, many things. When it comes to do service for Krishna, oh, why I should do that? Why I should serve Krishna? We should understand it's only after many lifetimes we get the opportunity to come to do service for Krishna. 
like the cowherd boys who were with Krishna in the forest of Vrindavan, they had all performed pious activities for many lifetimes and now they were there with Krishna and they were eating and playing with Krishna. So we are also fortunate after many lifetimes in the material world we have come to this position that we're, we're here, we have the opportunity to do service for Lord Krishna. We are so fortunate, but we cannot appreciate it. We're so covered by maya, by illusion. We're thinking, why I should serve Krishna? So we have to constantly defeat the mind and preach to the mind. Consider how fortunate we are. We've been given this opportunity after many lifetimes, many births and deaths. We're so fortunate now we have come to this position that we can actually do some service. Try at least, we're trying to serve Krishna. We're training to become a servant of Krishna. And we're training here in the temple. With, that's why the deities are here, by serving them. One day we will go back to Godhead and serve there. You serve nicely here, one day you'll go back to Godhead and serve there. But if we are thinking, oh, why I should do that, then Krishna will, he doesn't want us back to Godhead like that. If we're going to go back to Godhead and say, well, why I should do this? <laughs> yeah. We'll never make it in the spiritual world. So we're preparing to go to the spiritual world. And we have to control the mind and be eager. Understand how we're, we're so fortunate in such an opportunity. After many births, many lives, we have come to this position. Now we have this opportunity. So give this one life to Krishna. We've already wasted so many other lives in the material world. Give this one life, what's left of it, what you have left of it now, give it to Krishna. And you will not be the loser, but you will benefit. You get the greatest benefit. If you look at other people in the material world, how much they're suffering, how they're struggling, how miserable their lives are. And they're serving wicked and miserly people for some flickering sense gratification. We are serving Krishna. And by serving Krishna, we will get the greatest happiness, the greatest bliss. So one who sacrifices for the service of Krishna, he's never the loser. Neha Bikramana Shosti. Yes, a little advancement will save us from the greatest danger. So we should take advantage of this human life. This time here, this, our good fortune to be here. You know, there's so many countries in the world, there, there's not temples everywhere. It's so fortunate you have a nice temple, you have nice deities and everything. You have the opportunity to do service. If you had to live in other countries, it's much more difficult to be a devotee to practice Krishna consciousness. You know, there's people in countries like China and Russia, they pray, they would love to come here and be a devotee. So you're so fortunate. But 
even we're so fortunate we cannot appreciate it. That is our misfortune. That we cannot appreciate our good fortune. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, I wanted to know that uh, Krishna has 64 qualities, Vishnu has 60 qualities. How many qualities th does Balram have? Oh, Balaram also has 64 qualities. Balaram and Krishna are not different. But uh, Balram is not seen play, playing flute, Venu Madhuri. Huh? Venu Madhuri in Balram is not. Uh, well, Balaram is also a cowherd boy. He can, he, he, you know, he usually he carries a plow, but, you know, if he had to, he could play the flute. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, we see that uh, Srila Prabhupada, like in his very advanced age, he have done so much service. And we see like uh, all of like Prabhupada disciples, all, all of you are doing like so many services in an advanced age. But even doing so much service also like uh, very humble. So like my question is like as our, like our age is also growing and we are also facing like so many uh, health problem and other problems. So how to maintain the spirit of service and, and remain humble? By hearing and chanting intensely. By sadhana. You have to do sadhana very strictly. You have to be very strict with yourself. You have to control your mind and senses. Don't be lazy. Don't think I am senior devotee. Be humble. Think I am a servant of the servant. So try to be example for everyone. Be selfless. Don't be selfish. Be selfless. Think of yourself last and think of others first. That will keep you always strong in Krishna consciousness. Because of our false ego, we become lazy, we become greedy, we want luxury, we want comfortable living, so it's important, you have to study, you have to do the Bhakti Shastri course, you have to do Bhakti Vaibhav course, you have to go on do Bhakti Vedanta. Prabhupada said, Prabhupada said, I want all my disciples to be Bhakti Vedantas, to study the, the, up to Bhakti Vedanta. You have to do these things, you have to study Prabhupada's scriptures carefully. So these courses are designed to help all of us, to encourage all of us to read Prabhupada's books more carefully and to learn them. Right? So in the beginning we had, we just had ISKCON disciple course, very simple, two, three days, one week, you can finish the, the disciple course. Now you have to do Bhakti Shastri. Bhakti Shastri, study the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita and also Ishopanishad and Nectar of Instruction, Nectar of Devotion. You have to do that. That's for second initiation. Before you can get second initiation, you must study Bhakti Shastri. We don't want illiterate Brahmins. Oh, I am Brahmin. We don't know anything. Don't know any slokas, nothing. What kind of Brahman is that? Only I can eat. <laughs> Fill the belly. I'm eat like a Brahman. <laughs> Brahman abhojan. No. 
Yes, Prima. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, like uh, when when we start do, when we is doing sadhana, so in the process sometimes many times mind start getting deviated and uh, you know all the different kinds of thoughts coming. Sometimes very nasty thoughts. So we pray to Krishna that you know these thoughts why they are coming. As you said, like the Maya is very powerful. And then, you know, we contemplate that Maya is testing us. Or that Krishna is testing us. During this sadhana, we have to fix our mind. So, is it proper to pray to Krishna that please don't take so much test and let me sit down and chant your holy name. And uh, there is a, always a contrast. Like on the one hand, we see that Maya Dev is testing. And also we know that Krishna is testing us. So we feel like, oh Krishna, don't take so much test. Let me do my bhakti, please. Is it proper to have this? Not really. I don't think it's really proper that we should pray like that. Rather, the test will help us to improve our bhakti. If we don't get tested, then we'll, all, we'll just be comfort, we'll be in the comfort zone. And we'll think, you know, <laughs> you know, be very easy and relaxed. But the tests are what help make us more serious and more determined and more hardworking. But if, it's, if there's no tests, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a devotee. Yeah. <laughs> you know, take it easy. The comfort zone, it's not a good zone. It's not a good position to be in. You don't work hard. All the companies know they don't want their staff to be too, mu too much in the comfort zone. Tests, tests should not be too great, but the comfort shouldn't be too much either. But the tests certainly help us to become more serious and more careful, more determined in our devotion, to make more effort. No, Krishna didn't tell Arjuna, you know, <laughs> you know, don't worry Arjuna, I'll do everything. He wants Arjuna to go out there and fight. Of course, when the difficulties come, then Krishna is there to help us. And Krishna won't give you any test you can't pass. So, I don't think we should be praying to Krishna that, oh, don't test me. Uh, Queen Kunti said, let all these difficulties come again and again because then I will think, of, I will see you more and more. I will remember you more and more. So Queen Kunti was asking for prayer, asking for the difficulties. She wasn't saying to Krishna, take away all the difficulties. She was appreciating the trouble. And Prabhupada also said how he remembered the verse, Harisheta Dhanam Shanai. Lord Krishna said, when I am very merciful to someone, I take everything away from them. And then in that helpless condition, then they surrender to me. So some, Krishna has to put us through these things sometimes in order to bring us out of our comfort zone. <laughs> yes, Madhuji?
Hare Krishna Maharaj. My question is how to remember Krishna in 24 hours because sometimes we are doing service. So our mind is not exactly in our service. Our mind is somewhere else. So how to remember Krishna? By chanting the holy name. If you are chanting the holy name, then you will be remembering Krishna. So constant chanting is recommended. In the Shikshastikam it said, Kirtani Dahari. Always chant the holy name. So you do sadhana, like you come to temple, you should come every morning, come for the morning program, hear the classes, do the japa, all of the, will help you to remember Krishna throughout the day. Just like every morning we're speaking Srimad Bhagavatam, so you come and hear and then you have something to remember every day. If you're hearing Srimad Bhagavatam regularly, then you, you will think, oh, what did he say? What, what were they talking about this morning? Then the Bhagavatam, you can remember. So this is how you, you want to get a good start to the day. So you come to the temple, you see the deities, and you remember the deities. Think about the deities. How were they dressed? What color was the garland? What color was their dress? You know, you don't think, what color did I wear yesterday? What color, you know? You think about what color did Krishna wear, right? Bring the mind to Krishna. Okay, Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Gaur Premanande.